We've suffered through this hour and uh, about an hour and five minutes worth of a speech by Donald Trump. And I, I just have to say he he has no shame in saying nothing whatsoever. Just just I mean, no shame in lying or it, tonight he was a little more careful to fudge fudge the facts more so than just blatant lying so he tried to cover his butt a little bit more um but it was it was bereft of any substance um in terms it, it what, what was your take nick let's start with you well i thought like uh you know the area where he was truthful he was really able to lay down a lot of damage on the aca you know yeah. a lot of stuff he said about the aca was 100 percent accurate and that's a problem if donald trump can get up there and exploit the weaknesses of the aca you know, why everybody else is trying to make it seem like it's the like greatest thing since sliced hall, bread. You know, we have a problem. Of Congress. Now, that's yeah, not to say that the solutions that he proposed, like HSAs, those are hugely problematic. Breaking stuff up and leaving it to the states, hugely problematic. But the weaknesses he did identify were mm -hmm. accurate. It's just that the solutions he proposed wouldn't actually address those weaknesses. And that's, that's, that's par for the course for Republicans, right? And right, I think right. the greatest example of this would be like... Um, uh, Ron Paul, he goes, well, of course, you know, corporations giving money to politicians is a problem, but the solution is not to ban corporations from giving money to politicians. The solution is just for the politicians just not to take the money. Yeah, <laughs> it's like that doesn't make any sense. <laughs> it makes sense to him in, in his mind. Uh, and, and, you know, this is this this goes back to, um, you know, yeah, there are problems with the Affordable Care Act. Right. Um, one of the main problems with the Affordable Care Act and, and not to, to, to litigate that issue is that the same Republican governors who are complaining about it are the same ones who restricted the Medicaid expansion, which caused the inflation of the of the rates in their particular states. And now so they sabotage the 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 little I mean, even if they hadn't sabotaged the Affordable Care Act, we can all agree that it was just a piecemeal solution solution uh to a bigger problem but they sandbagged it to make it even worse and now they're complaining about it blah 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 but the biggest thing here for me is that he's making all these promises and it absolutely will not work there is not a solution that he's going to make inside of this corporate leaning framework for insurance that's going to lower the cost of of premiums as well as keep all these people on with pre condition pre-existing conditions that's going to keep all the good stuff and take away the mandate it just doesn't add up and it's not possible if it was possible they would have had another solution and they don't have one but that doesn't stop him from getting up there and talking about it for about 10 minutes saying how he's going to do everything right and fix every problem with it and take away the uh the mandate yeah, yeah. I mean, I have to, I have to agree there. Like, uh, he did make a lot of broad statements how how much better it's going to be. But let's be honest, you know, the the, the changes that they plan to make are going to disproportionately disproportionately affect the poor. So, Absolutely. you know, we're looking at a a group of people that don't necessarily vote in large numbers, and it may not necessarily hurt them very much. Right. Right. It may not, depending on what he does, because there's a way you can do health care reform, which may actually lower the costs for a lot of people in the middle and the upper that, you know, by basically kicking those people that gain coverage back off or, yeah. or putting them in a situation where the premiums are so high they can't afford it or, or some other mechanism that you have in place or even use some kind of delayed release poison pill. Who knows what kind of crazy policy the Republicans are going to come up with, but it's definitely going to be highly Republican. Yeah. And, and, and here's here's the problem with that. And it's the same problem that he has with the with the other portions of his speech. Right. They they're 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 trying to distinguish themselves from a uh, draw a distinction between what they want to do and what Barack Obama did. When the problem is Barack Obama actually took Republican leaning policies on the Affordable Care Act. That's basically Romney care with some with some other variations in there. But it's basically Romney care. It's a Republican idea. It's coming came from the Heritage Foundation. And now the Republican Party wants to repeal and replace it with something. In reality, they don't have anything that they can replace it with. The only really thing, the only thing they can replace it with is like single payer. And if they really wanted to have something successful and distinguish themselves from President Obama, I mean, they have to go to the left and do the single payer. But they're absolutely not going to do that. So it begs the question, what could they possibly do? All this bravado that Donald Trump is giving, all the stuff that he's saying, there's really not much room that he can do to do anything. And yet he spends all this time, gets all these standing ovations. Here's another thing that he, he made empty promises on. He made empty promises with regard to um, uh, with regard to the overall budget. Right. He's telling us that he's going to cut taxes, 
that he's going to increase military spending. He's going to, uh, uh, you know, all, all these other programs he's saying he's going to, but it doesn't add up. Donald Trump was saying something else with regard to health care tonight that I think may have gotten past a lot of people. Donald Trump said what well, one thing he said expressly, which was he wants to make it an interstate exchange, right? Not an interstate exchange, but he wants to be able to uh, buy. Uh, he wants people to be able to buy insurance across state lines. All right. And we could discuss the, the problems with that. But the other thing that he did not expressly say, but he kept hitting towards was tort reform. Right. He, he wants to be able to uh, minimize uh, the ability of people to sue doctors for malpractice. And and they feel the Republicans have have lived and died on the idea that the only way to get down the cost of, of health care is to reduce the cost of malpractice insurance. And uh, he didn't say it expressly, but he kept hinting towards that. Did anybody else hear that? Oh, yeah. I mean, I definitely I definitely picked up on that. And I live in a state, Texas, which has already passed a, a massive tort reform um, legislation. And, and we have some of the highest premiums and it doesn't do anything. You know, all it does really is is minimize risks of companies for when they mess up. So in yeah. Texas, I think, you know, big, major death and dismemberment, things of that nature. I think the, the maximum you can get is 250 K. I think that's what I think that's what tort reform basically did for Texas. And it did nothing to bring down um premium costs so i mean it's, right. it's, it's not even it's not even correlated really you know you think it might be but it's not so i just really don't know you know what else he could have meant he, he did phrase it like we have to bring down costs for for doctors right. and providers that could be that could be some sort of regulation elsewhere you know it could be a, a new num a number of things it's really not he's not he's not really being specific right <laughs> we don't really know what yeah. that could be it could be tort reform exactly. it also could be you know, you don't have to have this many oxygen tanks or you don't have to have this many people on staff. If you right, have this right, kind of hospital, yeah. you know, yeah. it, it could be all sorts of things that are put in place for, for safety measures or, or for whatever reason. We don't know. But, you know, all we do know is those policies are not designed necessarily to increase the quality of care people receive. They're really just there to increase the profit margins for providers when they provide that care.